Argentina's financial BRICS membership is more than a simple yes or no decision. It's a complex calculation involving multiple stakeholders with different interests. The country's choice will not only shape its own future, but could also have ripple effects across the globe. The geopolitical landscape is witnessing a seismic shift, with the BRICS alliance extending invitations to six new members during its 15th summit in Johannesburg this past August. Among Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Egypt, Iran, Ethiopia and Argentina, the last country's decision hangs precariously in the ballot. Initially welcomed by current President Alberto Fernandez as a strategic opportunity, Argentina's BRICS membership now faces uncertainty with the impending general elections this October. Fernandez, who chose not to seek re-election, will be replaced in December by a successor, who could potentially withdraw the country from the while the Liberal Justicialist Party candidate Sergio Massa pledges to honor the BRICS invitation if elected. The opposition Juntos por el Cambio coalition, represented by Patricia Bullrich and far-right Republican proposal party led by Javier Milei, have adopted a hostile stance. This complex interplay of domestic policies and foreign policy has positioned Argentina at a crossroads. The electorate now holds the power to shape the future of Argentina's global alliances. Dear friends of Think Bricks, as you may have guessed, in this video we will try to explain the multiple geopolitical, economic and social implications of Argentina's possible future membership in BRICS. In the intricate web of global geopolitics, Argentina finds itself at a crossroads that could redefine its international standing. The country has received an invitation to join BRICS, a coalition of emerging economies that has been challenging the Western-centric world order since its inception in 2009. With a combined GDP exceeding $27 trillion, BRICS nations are a force to be reckoned with, accounting for nearly a quarter of the global GDP. For Argentina, the timing is precarious. The nation rebels with economic challenges such as runaway inflation, dwindling currency reserves and the looming risk of debt default. Yet its abundant natural resources and strong agricultural sector make it an attractive proposition for BRICS economies. Amid this complex scenario, Argentina's decision could significantly impact its global standing and economic future. Years of reckless spending and borrowing have trapped Argentina in a vicious debt cycle. Its public debt today exceeds 90% of GDP, with currency reserves drying up fast. The nation stares at the green possibility of being enabled to service its massive $44 billion debt to the International Monetary Fund. Ironically, the very organization that has traditionally loaned Argentina funds repeatedly in the past only to see how systemic corruption and mismanagement threaten it away time and again. Argentina's economic history is a labyrinthine tale of debt, defaults and dashed hopes, stretching back to its first foreign loan in 1824. Initially intended to port infrastructure, the loan was diverted to fund a war against Brazil and took eight decades to repay, costing financially more due to compound interest. The country's addiction to overseas borrowing has been a recurrent theme, untreated by frequent bailouts from the International Monetary Fund since 1956, each accompanied by painful austerity measures. Post-World War II, Argentina enjoyed a period of growth fueled by infrastructure spending and import substitution policies. However, the 1955 US-backed coup against President Juan Perón plunged the nation into chaos. The 1980s were particularly tumultuous, marked by a debt crisis in 1982 and the cycle of recession and hyperinflation despite IMF interventions. Reforms in 1990s offered temporary stability but led to deindustrialization and a catastrophic default in 2001 wiping out much of the nation's wealth. President Nestor Kirchner in office till 2007 made strides in debt relief and IMF exit, but his efforts were outdone starting in 2015. 
Mauricio Macri's tenure and so massive IMF loans and capital flow liberalization, culminating in a record $57 billion IMF bailout in 2018. The result was capital flight exceedingly, even that under the 1976-83 military dictatorship and another default in 2019. Today, President Alberto Fernandez grapples with a staggering $324 billion debt, with $44 billion owed to IMF alone, consuming 90% of Argentina's expert earnings. In this context, the BRICS alliance offers Argentina a potential lifeline. In 2014, China helped Argentina avoid the financial crisis by using currency swaps, which began in 2009. They continued their financial relationship in 2017 and grew it in 2018. Just this June 2023, both countries extended their $19 billion currency swap for an additional three years. The New Development Bank, NDP, would provide infrastructure loans in local currency, aligning with the BRICS' emphasis on economic sovereignty over forced privatization. The October 22 presidential elections turned the country's potential BRICS membership into a heated campaigning sheet. The surprise victory of candidate Javier Benet in the August primaries shook the Argentine political scene. The libertarians anti-establishment and anti-communist rhetoric rules out ties with BRICS if he is elected president. Millet advocates dollarization to curb astronomical inflation, a strengthened alliance with America and the exit from Mercosur. His ideological opposite is our outgoing President Alberto Fernandez, who welcomed the BRICS invitation as a great opportunity. The center-right Juntos por el Cambio coalition, represented by Patricia Bullrich, also opposes joining BRICS, but its objection is pragmatic. It refers to Argentina's troubled history with Iran, when in 1992, Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires was bought, and later, in 1994, Jewish community center was attacked. In both cases, Iran was accused in directing the bombings and the Hezbollah of carrying it out. Segundo tema fundamental es que el gobierno tiene que volver atrás de la decisión de entrar a los BRICS, porque nosotros no podemos ser parte de un bloque donde tenés un estado terrorista como Irán que celebró el Parlamento, celebró la brutal invasión y terrorismo sobre el pueblo israelí. Eh, y tenés a Rusia, que de la misma manera atacó al pueblo ucraniano. En contrast, Peronist party candidates such as Massa pledge accepting the invitation if elected. Hence, voters face a stark choice between realigning with the West under Millet or pivoting east via BRICS under Massa. Notably, Argentina was invited after the primaries where Millet emerged first. This suggests BRICS aims to aid Massa's campaign by offering a tangible policy direction and from recent polls it seems to have had the desired effect. In fact, Massa has recovered many percentage points outlining a compelling head-to-head -head with Millet, with Bullrich not far behind. If no candidate gets more than 45% of the vote in the first round or 40% with a lead of 10% over the runner-up, it will go to a runoff. Certainly, the invitation forces Argentina to confront a momentous geoeconomic choice. Acceptance implies alignment with the magic multipolar order represented by the BRICS. Rejection favors reviving ties with traditional Western partners. Each option carries major trade-offs. BRICS entry grants preferential access to member markets, especially China and India that already absorbed 25% of Argentina's exports. Swap lines from China over Argentina financial latitude to restructure its IMF debt on affordable terms. And it is important to mention that Argentina has already started to pay its national debt to the IMF in Yuan. The country has been a serial defaulter that has struggled for years with inflation and a currency crisis. But short on greenbacks, the South American nation has paid part of its IMF loan with Chinese yuan, 
Buenos Aires made its latest payment on its $44 billion loan to the International Monetary Fund using a stock of special drawing rights, SDRs, and Chinese Yuan. The SDRs are an asset within the IMF created to supplement countries' official reserves. With a $2.7 billion payment, the country used $1 billion in yuan from a currency swap line with China and $1.7 billion of SDRs. The reason is that domestic economic problems have drained Argentina's dollar reserves, which are reportedly at their lowest level since the year 2016. Argentina's BRICS entry is more a geopolitical opportunity than economic panacea. It expands Argentina's strategic autonomy between global powers. But over dependence on China risks excessive bilateral reliance. Pivoting trading to alternate currencies requires gradual implementation to avoid destabilizing the peso. Powerful pro Western business lobbies could also impede the deeper BRICS integration. On the contrary, realigning family with the US and Europe has yielded Argentina limited benefits. Western powers have done little to resolve its recurring debt crisis, despite past shows of solidarity. And the IMS record bailouts failed to deliver lasting relief. Hence, Argentina must carefully weigh BRICS's risks and rewards. The bloc offers indispensable market access, investment, and financial support at affordable rates. Its resources could catalyze Argentina's growth and reduce IMF dependence. But BRICS ties should balance, not fully supplant Western partnerships. As to statecraft could leverage BRICS to unlock Argentina's potential while retaining friendly US-Europe ties. Overall, BRICS diversifies Argentina's options between competing global powers. If pragmatism guides decision-making, it could aid Argentina's revival. But unrealistic over-reliance on BRICS or the West ensures continued stagnation. Balance and versatility are the key. Either way, the people's will should be respected by all observers since it's ultimately their country and nobody else than them has the right to determine its destiny. We hope this video provided an insightful analysis into the multifaceted factors surrounding Argentina's potential BRICS entry. Please share your views in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to ThinkBricks for more such incisive geopolitical and social economic commentaries. In the meanwhile, stay curious and stay with us. Thanks for watching.